So NVIDIA and OpenAI, arguably the two most important companies in AI right now, just announced a deal. And it's so massive, so mind-bogglingly huge, that it's become a Rorschach test for the entire industry. You know, depending on who you ask, it's either the bedrock of our entire economic future, or it's the biggest sign yet that we're in a bubble that's about to pop. So which one is it? Okay, let's just start with the number, because it is absolutely staggering. $100 billion. That's the potential investment we're talking about from NVIDIA into OpenAI. It's a figure that's honestly hard to even wrap your head around, and it is pouring gasoline on an already raging fire of a debate. So what are we actually talking about here? Well, it's basically a two-way street. NVIDIA could invest up to $100 billion in OpenAI, and in exchange, OpenAI is committing to buy and deploy a jaw-dropping 10 gigawatts of NVIDIA's hardware. Now, to put that 10 gigawatts in perspective for you, that's something like four to five million top-of-the-line GPUs. That alone is about a quarter of the entire data center capacity in the United States right now. It is just a colossal undertaking. And, you know, for OpenAI CEO Sam Altman, this isn't just about a business deal. He is crystal clear on why they're doing this. In his view, they are literally building the foundation for the entire future economy. It's not just about training the next cool AI model, it's about creating the fundamental plumbing that's going to power everything for decades to come. And that brings us right to the heart of it, doesn't it? The core question of this whole explainer, is this deal a sign of a real, honest-to-God, game-changing tech boom, or are we just watching the inflation of the biggest, most self-referential bubble in modern history? Let's take a look at both sides of the argument. All right, let's dive into argument number one, the case that this is all just a massive self-fueling bubble built on some pretty circular logic and echoing some not-so-great moments from our financial past. This take from AI entrepreneur Sully Omar totally went viral, and you can see why. It just perfectly and simply captures the skeptical view. He breaks it down like this. NVIDIA gives $100 billion to OpenAI. OpenAI turns around and uses that money to pay a cloud provider, like Oracle, for compute power. And then Oracle has to take that money and use it to buy billions of dollars in chips from, you guessed it, NVIDIA. It's a perfect loop. And this has led to a really simple, powerful metaphor that you see everywhere now, an electrical outlet plugging directly into itself. It's this perfect image, right? It suggests a closed system that generates a whole lot of light and a whole lot of heat but it doesn't actually power anything in the real world. The money just goes around and around and around. And for anyone who remembers the dot-com bubble, this is all starting to feel a little familiar. The parallels are pretty striking. Back then, you had companies booking revenue based on press releases and letters of intent. Today, you have these massive deal announcements. Instead of vendor financing, you now have strategic investments. Instead of barter transactions, you have these compute for equity deals. The playbook looks eerily similar, which leads to that big, scary question mark at the end. What happens if demand suddenly dries up? And pouring a little fuel on this fire are recent comments from Meta's Mark Zuckerberg. He basically acknowledged the insane amounts of cash being thrown around, admitting that, yeah, misspending a couple of hundred billion dollars would be, quote, unfortunate. But he argues the even bigger risk is moving too slow and getting totally left behind. But the internet never forgets, right? The immediate reaction online from so many people was, to put it mildly, skeptical. The question was everywhere. Wait a minute, didn't he say the exact same thing about the metaverse? You know, the project he poured tens of billions of dollars into with very, very little to show for it? So you can see why the skeptics are asking this. It all leads to a really critical question. Are we just watching a rerun of an old movie we've already seen? Is this whole thing a giant house of cards, just waiting for a breeze to knock it all down? But that's only one interpretation of this Rorschach test. The other side of the argument, the idea that this time really is different, it all comes down to one crucial five-letter word. And that word, of course, is demand. We're talking about real, tangible, absolutely explosive demand from actual users, actual customers. And the people who believe in this boom say that this single factor is what separates what's happening now from pretty much every other speculative bubble we've ever seen. And I mean, just look at the numbers. They're kind of wild. Take OpenAI's annualized revenue. Just last year, in July of 2023, it was sitting at around $1 million. Today, it is $12 billion. And this isn't just money from other tech companies playing the same game. This is real revenue from real people and real businesses paying for a service they clearly find valuable. And hey, this isn't just an OpenAI story. Their main competitor, Anthropic, has seen its revenue quintuple a 5x increase in 2024 alone. 
jumping from $1 billion to $5 billion. This is not an isolated event. It's a massive industry-wide surge. Investor Martin Bradstreet really puts a fine point on it. He says, sure, you could call this whole thing a circular Ponzi scheme, but you'd be ignoring the single most important part. OpenAI is making, in his words, ridiculous amounts of revenue from the rest of the global economy. The money isn't just circling around inside Silicon Valley. It's flooding in from the outside world. So, this gets us to a really fascinating point. What if it's not one or the other? What if you accept that, yes, the market is a little crazy right now, and that the underlying demand is totally real? Well, that forces you to stop debating about the bubble and start asking a much, much bigger question. And you can really start to feel this vibe shift happening in the conversation. There's a new counter-narrative emerging that's not just about riding the wave. It's about seriously asking, what if this is all actually real? What if we are literally watching the construction of a brand new global economy right now in real time? And here's that grander vision put forward by Balaji Srinivasan. He argues that what we're seeing is the old legacy economy being phased out, sunsetted as he puts it, and being replaced by an economy built on the internet. And his point is, even with all this craziness, we are still just at the foot of the mountain. This whole AI infrastructure build-out is just the next big step in a much longer climb. So where does all this leave us? What's the ultimate takeaway here? Well, maybe it's that the simple binary choice of boom or bust is just the wrong way to look at it. It is entirely possible for both things to be true at the same time. The market can be frothy, over-exuberant, even a little crazy, while the underlying technological shift is profoundly real and world-changing. Either way, the biggest companies on the planet are betting their entire futures on this, and that spending is going to shape our world for decades, no matter what. Which brings us right back to that final question, right back to the center of this Rorschach test. When you look at this $100 billion deal, what do you see? Is it the peak of market madness, or is it the very real, very expensive foundation of a new world being built right before our eyes? I guess we'll find out.